Okay, we're inside the Fort Mose or Fort Mose Visitor Center. Um, I don't know why some people pronounce it Mose, but they do. Um, so we'll, we'll stay with that. As you can imagine, this is a very, uh, uh, very much a, a uh, presentation of slavery. This is, there's a lot of inaccuracies and, and of course, misleading things in here. And uh, we'll look at those and, and uh, to a degree try to address them. This is built as the first free black community on the continent, which is probably true. Um, in 1738, more than 100 runaways reached St. Augustine. The government established a fort and a community for them near here. Fort Mose itself is out that way, a few hundred yards, and we're going to go check it out. Um, and, and all that, that is true. They're, they're, the English held slaves in these colonies, um, and they were not manumitted or emancipated. Um, until the, I think it was the 13th Amendment of the Constitution in 1866 or seven. Um, so between the time of the, uh, the, the first uh, European landed here until that time, there were African men and women who were held as slaves. Um, not every person who was black was a slave. Many people who were black owned slaves. The, the idea or the practice of slavery uh, began uh, with the uh, neighboring Africans capturing and delivering other Africans uh, to the European who then uh, took them either to Europe or to uh, this continent or even to the South American continent and, and made them slaves. I thought this was interesting here. This talks about uh, Francisco Menendez, uh, who was a leader here at this site. And then it says he joined the Yamasi Indian War and escaped with his American Indian allies to St. Augustine. Well, there were no American Indians. There were only Indians. There was an America. There was an American continent. There was no America as a nation. There was no nation in, in the early 18th century. Um, every, every colony every, uh, was just that, a colony. It was a geopolitical designation, but it was... Uh, there was a governor, and he, he was answerable directly to the uh, to the sovereign in Europe, in, in, in uh, this case, the king. Um, and in, in the case of people living here, it was also the king, but it was a Spanish king. So, uh, or uh, depending on where else you might have lived uh, in Canada area, it would have been the French king. So um, these people were all answerable directly. They were not answerable to the people, they were answerable to the king. And there was no American Indian, there was no, you know, other kind of Indians. There was Aboriginal people that lived here, there were Indians. And they were all different kind of tribes and they fought each other and enslaved each other and everything else for, for uh, you know, millennia. So um, that's probably so far the most glaring inaccuracy and uh, propaganda is statement. Um, this talks about the languages that were spoke here. This was a very homogenous area, a multicultural mix. Um, the Spanish apparently did not enslave the black, uh, or the African, I should say, directly. Um, although there is evidence of them doing that in their own country. They must not have done that here. Um, but they did bring slaves here with them. Um, Eventually, I guess they manumitted them. King, what was his name, Carlos, uh, manumitted all the slaves and declared that anybody who was here was free. As long as you were a Catholic, you're good to go. Um, so, if you if you uh, trans or uh, converted to Catholicism, no matter what your nationality, ethnicity, or anything else, you were considered um, a Okay, you were free, free to go. Um, this is a diorama of the fort. Very cool stuff. And a 
apparently we now know where the fort is and have since, I guess, the 80s, and uh, they've excavated it. And this volunteer was telling me how to get out there, so I'm going to check that out in a little bit. Um, this I thought was cool. This is the timeline. It says several free Africans came to Florida with Ponce de Leon. And I don't know why that's important to note, but it is. I'm sure there's a bunch of other free people that came with him, but um, that's part of the slanted propagandist nature of these types of displays in this day and age. Uh, it says here Columbus called the natives Indians because he thought he landed in India, which we all know that. They're just simply Aboriginal people who have myriad diverse cultures, languages, ethnicities, etc., etc. So um, well, that's kind of cool. It shows Narvaez. And we know he came up through here. He also landed on the other side um, of Pinellas County. Shows Fort Caroline. To this day, we don't know where that is. We know about where it is. There's a replica out there, but no one knows exactly where it is. And this just is, like I said, the timeline. Um, here in 1619, uh, it talks about crowded ships carrying slaves from Africa to the English and Spanish colonies. I don't know that the French ever held, uh, no, the, yeah, the French had slaves as well. And they were also African descent. Okay, and that just shows you, you really have to visit this place to, to see what's going on. To get a full view of this place. And this talks about... Different... Uh, archaeological evidences of mosaic. So that's really exciting I'm stuff. You can go check. We're going to go check out out here. I see this really cool old boat out here. This is obviously the back end of this place. Let's see where they have different Presentations. This is a really cool boat. Okay, we're kind of doing this backwards. Uh, gonna go back out to the vehicle and see a couple of these kiosks on the way out. There's some kind of cool old sculpture supposed to represent freedom. These are the Fort Mose tiles. To many of whom slaves, Congo, Mandinga, the tiles patterns are symbolic, a special emblems of my mortal presence in African heritage and lore. So they're not original, but they, um, they're emblematic. Okay, so I'm going to go back out here. And I thought these kiosks were fairly... Um, oh, let me show you this. That's pretty cool. I'll be able to remember this. Don't know if I'll get back here ever. I'm glad I came. I've been here once in the rain. It was We were under umbrella the entire time. It was a great trip, but 
wasn't conducive to seeing anything. But I thought this was very uh, even. So these must have been done a long time ago. These were more realistic. Um, this talks about the excavation of the fort. And again, you really have to see this in person to understand. Jose Homesteaders. Fort Mose 2, 12 years after the Bloody Mose Battle, more residents returned to the frontier construction of the second fort and community. That's an artist's rendering of that. Here's some artifacts. Here's a really cool old drawing of a map, I should say, of where, where it is and was. Was and is. Bloody Mose. This shows the, um, talks about the battle when the English attacked St. Augustine uh, and got in 1740 and got as far as this. This was a, a big reason why they put these people out here uh, in addition to giving them a place to live amongst themselves and by themselves uh, in their own community. A big reason uh, was also this was north of St. Augustine, this was the, the northern approach to St. Augustine. So anybody coming down to attack it from the north would have had to run across these guys first. So this was more or less, as much as anything else, a, a northern defense, a first line of defense for St. Augustine. This talks about Fort Mose 1. in flight. In 1693, Spain's King Charles II, so that would have been, yeah, King Carlos, I guess, proclaimed that any English slave that reached Spanish Florida would be granted his freedom. So I wonder what the Spanish slaves did. I mean, they were known to, to enslave uh, blacks and Muslims, um, anyone from African continent, along with uh, English and uh, any other Europeans. I mean, it was not it was not exclusive to blacks. They, Spanish take anybody. They'd happily enslave them. Oh, this talks about the Middle Passage. It's a really interesting. I've seen some of these um, drawings and renderings before. I thought this was really cool. This talks about how the Africans captured the other Africans, took them to the coast, gave them to the English or whomever Europeans, and uh, they then brought them to the various islands and colonies and, and sold them to the, the ultimate uh, owner, the person that would own them eventually. And this talks about kind of going backwards here, obviously. I mean, should have started here and moved up. But again, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is just, an overview. You want to you want to really come out here if you want to get a full idea of what of what this place is all about. And this talks about this is African origin. Some of the residents fought the Yamasi War, later fled south, and uh, this talks about the King of the Conda, Congo. So this was not, I mean, African slavery was not about blacks, quote unquote. It was just about enemies getting rid of their other enemies, capturing them and slavery, enslaving them and uh, gaining a lot of money from it. Here's one of these really neat weight marker signs. And I just try to get as much as I can in there. It can be paused and read if anyone wants to talks about how the late 17th century uh, slaves have been escaping to this area. So um, that's it. The actual fort is out further along here, which we're gonna we're gonna go out to see if I can. 
this guy just told me about where the actual fort is at. That would just be like, wow. Cream of the crop, the icing on the cake, the mud in the pie. To be able to see that. Real quick, we got on this boardwalk. Oh, we definitely got some low tide here. This guy said going low tide. And you can see there was a path out here. We need to go check it out. Now we're out. 